Good morning. This is Artie, the Vintage Stitcher. I am so happy that you are here with me today. Today I'm going to show you something fun. Now, I did not invent this. This was um, by The Daily Quilter, and I will leave her link below, her website below, and she also has, a, I think, a blog or something. Um, I found her on Pinterest and absolutely love her little projects. But you guys keep asking for needle books. I don't make a ton of needle books, but her idea was so super cute and it's so super fast. You can crank out a bunch of these. They're fun for gifts. They are needle cards, okay? Look at how cute this is. And then you untie it. And these are just basic ones. I'm going to show you just basically how to do it and then you guys can like foo-foo it up all you want decorate it it's so much fun then the inside is just your um, fleece your batting your flannel your felt whatever you want to use for your needles okay um this one has like blank spaces so she's using these kind of like as gifts like as greeting cards for her sewing friends and i thought they were so cute but you could really really do a lot with these um and my mind is like going totally crazy on how how I could cute see these up, how I can recycle get you know like greeting cards, how I could just do all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to show you the technique today, and then you guys can just go wild. So I made this one, and I made this one. And this one's a little bit more primitive. These are more my colors. Okay, and this one has just a little twine piece in it <clears throat> and a little bit darker cardstock okay so they are super cute super easy so let's get started I am going to adjust the camera so that you can see what I'm doing and if you have any questions if you have any questions please leave your questions in the comments below I'll be happy to answer them in the comments or I will catch up on the next video or you can email me anything you want um sometimes i forget to to say something or i forget to name a brand or w whatever and i'm always happy to answer those questions so i'm gonna adjust let's get started all right the first thing you want to start with is card stock you don't want just um scrapbooking paper you need to have something that has card stock I found some of this um, cardstock at Hobby Lobby, and this is a cute, it's got all like the gingham checks to it. So this would be super cute to use. Um, otherwise, <clears throat> you can find like basic cardstock pads like this with just whatever colors you want. And these are pretty nice. You know, you can kind of suit your color to your fabric that you want to use. Um, I did find this this scrap of paper and now this is quite a bit heavier so you could definitely use something like this if it's um, got a heavy feel to it okay so um, and then but something like this now you want to decide you know do you want do you want this print on the inside the outside do you want to be able to write on your card do you just want it decorated that sort of thing so like I said, I'm going to show you the technique and then um, we can kind of go from there. So what you're going to need is you're going to need your piece of fabric. All right. And you're going to want to keep, press that nice and smooth. I'm going to press that while I'm talking. Now you can make these any size that you want. All right. I cut, I have these pieces of bat, uh, like fleece batting style, the polyester, nice tight fleece. So I was kind of basing mine off of this size. So I cut my pieces, my cardstock, I think like six by nine and a half. Um, but you can adjust, you can adjust your um, cardstock to any size you want. I think I'm going to use the gray, the gray on this one. So Basically, what we're doing is we're going to be attaching this fabric to the cardstock. So now, if you used a scrapbook paper that had a pretty print on one side and was plain on the other, you have to decide, do you want that print on the inside and you want to put fabric on the outside so that when you open it, you can see the pretty print? 
which is where I'm more inclined to go to because I still want to use my fabric on the outside. You know, I still want to really add to the to the experience of it all. So, you know, this is something that you can definitely play with colors and size styles and just different different um different cardstocks, different fabrics, that sort of thing. All right, so I have my fabric, I have my cardstock, I have my piece of batting, felt, flannel, whatever you want to use on the inside, and I have some heat and bond, okay? This is just regular heat and bond. It's got glue on one side, paper on the other, okay? So what we're going to do is we are going to <clears throat> add heat and bond to the back you want to put the glue side to the ugly side of fabric. All right, glue down, and you're going to iron this on. And of course, when I cut all this, I miscut, so I'm going to have to piece and patch this together, which is a nice thing to know because I don't like to waste any scraps. So you're also going to want to have paper scissors and fabric scissors, all right? So I kind of have to piece and patch this together, which is all right. So all I do, and you can do this, it's not a big deal. You're just getting glue to the back side of that fabric, all right? We're going to be trimming it down and it's all going to work out just fine. Get that, so get your heat and bond. all pieced and patched together or cut it correctly you know so this is what you have you have your heat and bond your paper side and then your pretty side okay then you are going to peel your paper off and expose your glue and when you piece and patch like that it's just going to come off in different it's, it's all going to be fine it's all fine. There's no, you know, the paper comes off. So here, I'm going to move this stuff over because I want to show you how I do this next step. And I want my ironing board to be over. So what you're going to do is you're going to have your fabric now with your glue on it, okay? Your cardstock. Now you need to decide which side you want up, which side you want showing, and what side you want to attach your fabric to. So I'm attaching my fabric to the smooth side of this, and I want the bumpy linen look side up, okay? So at this point, you do want to come in and trim as much as you can off of that fabric, because you, you don't want to get glue on everything. It just makes a mess. And it could even be slightly smaller than your cardstock. We're gonna trim this up, okay? It's very important not to add steam to this because then you're gonna wrinkle your paper, it's gonna warp, and it's gonna lose its shape. So, I flip this over so my fabric is up, my steam is off, all right? And then I press. And what I'm doing is I'm bonding that fabric to the cardstock. How fun is that? How fun, fun, fun is that? So now you have this. Okay. So I'm going to slide this back over because now what you want to do is you want to kind of clean up these raw edges. And this is where it doesn't really matter what size you start with. You can, you can, you trim it up. You trim it up. So like, see right now it's nine, it's six by nine and a half, but it's going to be a little bit smaller that, than that when I'm done. So you come through, you clean, clean it up, clean up your edges, make it square. Just trim them up nice and so that everything's nice and neat nice and neat tidy 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 my kids always hated when i used that word tidy i'd always say time to tidy up and my son ben would say 
that's just a nice word for clean house. <laughs> so, he, he, you, yeah. So then you have this, okay? I came back through, I rounded my corners. I just thought it was a cuter look with the rounded corners. So, and they don't have to be perfect. Just come in here with your scissors and round your corners. Or if you have one of those fancy corner holes or corner rounder things from, you know, for scrapbooking, use that. But I just use scissors. A little bit deeper than that. And you can clean these up at the very end if you want to. So that they're nice and neat and even. Now, if you have any fabric that kind of pulls away from this while you're doing your cutting, see like right here, you just bring it back over to your iron and give it a little press. Okay, and it will rebond that glue for you. <clears throat> okay, so now you have your fleece, and you want your fleece or your flannel to be smaller than your fabric. So at this point, I'm going to clean this up too. All right, I want nice, neat, square edges. Nice and neat. And I eyeball this. I don't get real technical with measurements. Sorry, I wish I could be a more technical person, but I'm just not. So, see, I'm just kind of, <clears throat> let me get this in camera shot. I'm just kind of going to eyeball this. I want it about there. I'm going to take off about yay much. And, and it will be good. It will be, it will all be fine. And then you just put that in there again. Okay. It all fits. Okay. So what we are going to do next, let me get some of the scraps out of the way. Get my scissors out of the way. You are going to fold your fleece or your flannel or whatever in half and set that aside. And then you are going to take your cardstock piece with your fabric on it and you are going to fold it in half. And you're going to give it a really good crease, okay? I put it back under the iron and I give it a little shot, a little shot of heat. And this is where you can kind of come back and clean up your corners if your corners aren't quite what you want them to be. See, no harm, no harm. All right, <clears throat> so now you have your card and you're gonna put your fleece in there. You're just gonna eyeball it, just gonna eyeball it. Then you're going to go to your sewing machine and you are gonna sew right directly on that creased line, okay? See how it creases like that? We are gonna sew a line right on the sewing machine. Use an old needle. Um, or your needle will be old when you get done with these projects. So I'm just gonna slide over here <clears throat> to my machine and I start at the very top and I run the stitch all the way to the very bottom. I don't just stitch it here. I run it all the way from the top to the bottom. Let me just do this. And this is what it looks like, okay? It doesn't have to be a perfect stitch. My stitches are never perfect. I don't have matching thread in there right now. I have green thread. I mean, it matches well enough. But that stitch is also going to help this to fold a little bit better, okay? Now, to tie, to make the tie, so now you have your, you have your needle book. You have your needle book, and it's all 
can trim off those fuzzies, whatever. You can decorate this however you want, okay? So if you wanted to add some little buttons here, or if you wanted to have more than one layer of fleece or flannel in here, definitely you can do that. I would use a walking foot on your machine if you're gonna add more than just one layer, um, just because your machine is not gonna like all that bulk. Now, she, um, Amy on the uh, quilting, the Daily Quilter, used like twine and then punched it through with a, a chunky needle, all right, which I really like. I used um, one of these Lori Holt chunky needles and it worked like a charm, okay? It pulled, pulled through, I just threaded a piece of twine, put a knot on one end, popped it through the hole and it's on there, all right? But on this one, I did not have cute, I did not have cute twine. So I had this cute little mini rick rack that I could use. So next best thing, you can get your hot glue gun out. Hot glue, um, where did I put it? I have my rick rack. Pick a nice length of it. You need two. Okay. And of course, a cute button. So what I did was kind of eyeballed it. I eyeballed where I was going to put, put my tie and my button, and I just glued it down. Give that a second, just like that, all right? And then on the back, I did the same thing. I just put a little drop of glue. I didn't put a button on the back, but you can definitely do it any way you want. A little piece of glue. And there you have a needle card. How cute is this? And now you could just tie that in a bow and you can do your tails as long or as short as you want. All right. Tie that up. You have your needle book or needle card. These are such super cute gifts for your sewing friends, for just just for in your your project bags, everything. I mean, you can keep your needles in here. You can keep them all nice and neat. I've even thought about how I could add a little pocket to them. So hang tight because you know now I can't get it unknotted here. But I had thought of even taking like a little piece of fabric and then just making a little pocket there, so I could put some needle um, packaged needles into into there. So I have a feeling these are going to be quite addictive. I am really, really loving this project. Um, hopefully by like Wednesday, I'm hoping to have in my video, I'm hoping to have some extra fun stuff. But you could definitely make little pockets in here. You can make little notes. You can add all sorts of jazzy things. Doll them up however you want. So I'm going to adjust this camera a little bit. Hey, everybody. <laughs> Let's see if we can get this to you. Nah. There we go. All right. <laughs> so this is such a cute technique. Um, I just, I can see everybody just kind of running with it. Um, I thought it was fun. I thought it was, not everybody likes their sewing machines, but you can definitely sew a straight line enough to make these little, these little needle cards. So leave me a comment. Let me know how you would jazz yours up or foo-foo it up or what you would add to your needle card, um, what you think would be a good idea or what you would use to kind of repurpose something that you have around the house that could be made into a needle card and what occasion would you use them for. So definitely leave me a comment. I would love to hear from you. 
Um, if you're loving the videos and having me come into your home every single day, I know some of you are probably sick of me, but if you love having me come in every single day, please hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell, give me a thumbs up, leave me a comment, let me know if you're new here or if you've been a long time viewer. I love to hear from all of you. When you're out and about in the world, please be kind, spread love, and find peace.